Greetings. We're here today to talk about how you graph absolute value functions. I've divided the goals for this section into two parts. Um, the first is that you're going to learn what the properties of the graph of the parent absolute value function, y equals the absolute value of x, are. All right. So we'll learn properties um, such as the shape and other specific things that are going to help us to graph absolute value functions more efficiently. And then you're going to use those properties along with transformations in order to graph functions of the form y equals a times the absolute value of x minus h plus k, which looks quite complicated but really isn't that big a deal. Now first, let's go ahead and talk about that parent function for the absolute value family function. Hopefully you know what I mean by parent function. Um, at any rate, the function y or f of x equals the absolute value of x. What would the graph of an absolute value function look like, and why would it look that way? Well, the easy way to figure out how this graph is going to look is going to be simply to complete a table of values in which we input values for x, and then we take their absolute value. All right, so for instance, you happen to know that the absolute value of any number is going to be positive. So when x is negative 4 and negative 2, you're going to get positive 4 and positive 2, respectively. The absolute value of 0 is 0. And the absolute value of positive 2 and positive 4 are going to be positive 2 and positive 4. And so having done, made that table, now what I'm going to do is go ahead and plot those points, and you'll start to see the shape of the absolute value graph form. And there, indeed, you start to see the shape of the graph. Now, a lot of people will describe the shape of an absolute value graph as a V. You can also describe it as an angle. Now, I've only plotted some of the points in the graph. I'm going to go ahead and make some lines to, to finish out the graph. So you'd have one side of that V shape going this way, the other side of that V shape going this way. And it makes sense when you just look at the basic function that the outputs um, for every input value that you can think of will be positive. And so we end up with this V shape where all the Y coordinates are positive, except for, of course, when you plug in zero. All right, now that you kind of know the shape, what I want to discuss is a couple of the properties of the graph. And one of those things is this, simply that both of the sides of uh, the graph of an absolute value function are linear. And so they have a slope, all right? And in this case, the slope of the right side was equal to positive 1. You can see we would go up 2 over 2, up 2 over 2, 2 over 2, of course, being 1. And the reason the slope was positive 1 is because we had 1 times the value of, absolute value of x. Then the slope of the opposite side, or sorry, of the other side, ends up being the opposite of the slope of the right side. This is the slope of negative 1 over here. You can see we go down 2 and right 2, down 2 and right 2. All right. And the other thing that is going to be important for us for going ahead and graphing an absolute value function when we modify the equation from this very simple form is we're going to have to be able to find out where the location of the vertex is. And that is indeed a vertex. If you think of this graph as an angle, then you can see why I would call that a vertex. All right, so let's see if we can deal with more complicated equations now that we know some simple properties of absolute value graphs. And in order to start understanding those other more complicated absolute value equations that you're going to be asked to graph, I want to start breaking it down piece by piece. I want you to see what changing small things in that parent function, y equals the absolute value of x, um, what those changes in that equation, of how they affect the graph of the function. And so what I've done here is I've taken essentially the equation y equals the absolute value and I've rewritten it in the form of y equals a times the absolute value of x. I want you to see what effect multiplying the absolute value has, or multiplying it by a constant has on the graph. So, what happens if a is negative? Well, let's go ahead and complete the table of values right here. Of course, if a is negative 1, then we're going to have negative 1 times the absolute value of negative 4. Now, the absolute value of negative 4 is positive 4, but when you multiply that by negative 1, you're going to get negative 4. And that's going to happen all the way around is what we would have gotten for just the absolute value of these inputs is whatever that would be, we're now getting the opposite of it. So we'll get negative 2, we'll get 0 still, and then negative 2 and negative 4. 
And you'll see the effect that has on the graph pretty quickly as we plot these points. There are the points. Let's go ahead and create the sides. And you can see that the effect was when I multiplied that absolute value by a negative value, when A was negative 1, then the graph began opening downwards instead of upwards. All right. Now a couple observations to make right here. The slope of the right side of the graph is now negative 1. And one of the things I definitely want you to know is that whatever the value of A is, in this case negative 1, that's always going to correspond to the slope of the right side of the graph of an absolute value function. And then the slope of the left side would, have, would be the opposite of that. This is a positive 1 over here. As you can see from left to right, you would go up 2 over 2, up 2 over 2, and well, yeah, so that's going to simplify to 1. And the vertex is still 0, 0 for right now. All right, well, what if I change the value of A to positive 3 halves? Well, one thing I hope we've established at this point is that this is going to be an absolute value graph that opens upward because the value of A is positive. But let's see what effect that has on the, X, or sorry, on the output values for these same input values that we've been using. So here we're taking the absolute value of our input and then we're multiplying that output by 3 halves or 1 and a half. So the absolute value of negative 4 is 4. 4 times 3 halves is 6. Um, the absolute value of negative 2 is 2. And then 2 times 3 halves is 3. And then we get 0 and 3 and 6, respectively. Let's graph that. And so here's the graph. Now it is the same V shape. It's opening upwards as we knew it would because A was positive. And then look and see that what I told you earlier is true. The A was 3 halves, and I just told you that that would correspond with the slope of the right-hand side of these graphs. And indeed, you can see that as we go from left to right for the right-hand side of the graph, we go up 3 units, right 2 units, up 3 units, right 2 units. We continue that pattern. And then the slope of the left side is going to be the opposite of that. From left to right, we would go down 3 and right 2, down 3 and right 2. So the slope is negative 3 halves, and so the vertex is at zero, zero. Okay, so this is what's called a stretch of the graph. When you change the slope like that, um, this graph is kind of a little narrower than it was whenever it was just a y equals the absolute value of x. That's called a stretch. And then, of course, when we a was negative, there was a reflection in the x-axis that was involved in making that graph. All right, let's see what it looks like when you change a couple of other values in the equation of an absolute value function. And in this case, those changes that I'm going to make, they're going to result in, sorry, in translations instead of reflections or stretches. And basically, I've rewritten that parent function that we had in a couple different ways. On the equation on the left, we'll say that's written in the form y equals the absolute value of x plus k. And we'll say that this function on the right, its equation is written in the form y is equal to the absolute value of x minus h. And since this will be important in understanding our results here, I, I should go ahead and point out then that for this first equation, the value of k is equal to negative 3 because you would have to add negative 3. All right, it's supposed to be a plus k. You'd have to add negative 3 to get a minus 3 right there. And then h takes a little getting used to. You see how it's x minus h here, and what I'm subtracting is positive 3, so that means my h is actually positive 3. Um, when we refer to h, it's always going to have the opposite side of whatever's been subtract, well, added or subtracted from um, the, the x inside the absolute value bars there. All right, so h is positive 3. Now let's just focus on that left-hand equation for a moment. So we're going to take the absolute value of each of our inputs, and then we're going to decrease that output by 3. The absolute value of negative 4 is 4, and if you decrease that by 3, you get 1. The absolute value of negative 2 is 2, and then subtract that by 3, you're going to get negative 1. All right, absolute value of 0 is 0, you're going to get negative 3 when you subtract 3 from that. And then 2 and 4 are going to get, end up giving us the same thing as negative 2 and negative 4, respectively. Um, they're going to give us negative 1 and 1 for their output values. You could double check the math if that didn't make sense right off the bat. And let's go ahead and graph that. And there's the graph. Now you're going to see this opens upward again, which makes sense because if I was to say this equation had an A, it would have been positive 1, wouldn't it? And building on that fact, since A was positive 1, the slope of the right side of the graph here is positive 1. You can see you go 
up to over to, up to over to. And the slope of the left side is still the opposite of the slope of the right side. So that's m equals negative 1. But what's changed here is where the vertex is located. That was the effect of this value of k was it moves the vertex. And it happened to move the vertex down when k was negative 3. Because you can see the vertex is now at 0, negative 3. And so the thing I want you to take away from this is that the value of k in such an equation is going to correspond with the y-coordinate for the vertex of the absolute value graph every time. Okay? Now, what effect does the absolute value, sorry, what effect does the value of h have on the graph of an absolute value function? Well, first of all, what's the difference between a k and an h? Um, the k occurred when I subtracted 3 from the output. We had already taken the absolute value, and then we subtracted 3. I'm calling it h whenever I'm doing the addition or subtraction before the absolute value is taken. And that's the case here. And essentially what it does is it is decreasing by 3 here the value of x it takes to get the same output values that we had before. And I think you'll see that. You're going to notice I put different values here, and this will capture the essence of the shape a little bit better, the fact that I did that. So we're going to subtract 3 from each of these input values, and then we'll take the absolute value of the result. Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4, and the absolute value of that is 4. 1 minus 3 is negative 2, and the absolute value of negative 2 is, of course, 2. And if you keep on going, you're going to see we'll get 0 there, we'll get 2 there, and 4 there. So the same output values is y equals the absolute value of x, but to get those output values, I had to use numbers that were 3 units smaller. Now let's graph that. And so that means we have ended up shifting the graph three units to the right. Notice the vertex here is not at the origin. It's at the point 3, 0. So subtracting 3 from the input value moves the graph three units to the right there. Okay, so, well, I think you kind of get the idea, but it didn't change the slope. That subtraction itself didn't change the slopes of the sides. This slope was positive 1. And this slope is negative 1. You can check for yourself. All right. Now what I'd like to do is put together an equation that has an A and an H and a K all in it and make sure you understand the effects of each of those variables and how you use them to in, or, well, in order to make the graph of an absolute value function. The important features that you need to know about the equation of an absolute value function in order to make its graph is you have to know what would the vertex be and what would the slope of the right and the left side of the uh, graph of that equation be as well. And so from what we've seen in our previous slide, we know that the values of h and k determine the vertex, and h happens to be the, I don't think I wrote this specifically on that graph, but h happens to be the x-coordinate for the vertex, and k is always going to be the y-coordinate for the vertex. And then, as I've stated many times in this video, the slope of the right side is always going to be equal to a. Whether a is positive or negative, the slope of the right side is always equal to a, and the slope of the left side is always the opposite of that. All right, so if I was just going to make a general graph, here's what it would look like. Now this graph right here is assuming that a is positive, um, but the properties that you'll see here is that the slope of the right side is equal to a, the slope of the left side is equal to negative a, and the coordinates of the vertex would be h and k. All right, now what if a was negative? I'll make that in a different color. Yeah, if a was negative, all that's going to happen is that the graph is going to start going downwards. All right, if a is less than zero, that's what I'm trying to write right there. But the slope of the right side would still be a. It would just be going downwards, obviously, and the slope of the left side would be negative a, and you would still have h and k for the coordinates of the graph, or the vertex of the graph. All right, I'd like to graph one equation with you in which we have values of a, h, and k all present. And this is a function whose equation we're going to be graphing. And we're going to start off simply with this. The most important point on the graph of an absolute value function is this vertex, and you can determine this vertex by looking at the values of h and k. And whenever we look at the values of h and k, remember that the value of h is the opposite of whatever you see inside of the absolute value bars with the x. So since it's a plus 2 right there, that means our h is a negative 2. 
And since this is a plus 1 at the end, our value of k always corresponds with the constant being added or subtracted after the absolute value. Um, since that's a positive 1 there, our k is going to be positive 1. And so we know the vertex of the graph will be the point negative 2, 1. All right, and then after you've placed or plotted the uh, vertex, we don't have to bother making an XY table, by the way. That's what I'm trying to teach you here. After we've located the vertex, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use the value of A in order to determine what the slopes of the right and the left sides are, respectively. And I've always said that the value of A corresponds with the slope of the right-hand side of the graph. And so the slope of the right side will be negative 3 fourths. And the way I'll create that is to go to the vertex and then, of course, go down 3 units and write 4 units and plot a point. And for good measure, I went ahead and did it again. All right, so there's the right-hand side of the graph. And then to make the left side, we said that the slope of the left side will be the opposite of the value of A, and the opposite of negative 3 fourths is positive 3 fourths, of course. Now, you've got to be careful when you're graphing the left side, because if you just say, hey, I know the left side's equation is going to be 3 fourths, and from the vertex, then I'm going to go up 3 and write 4, what you're in, going to end up with is a, a V that opens to the right instead of opening downwards or, well, yeah, downwards is what we're looking for here. We've got to make sure that this is an absolute value graph that opens downward. And so rather than thinking of the rise as being positive 3 and positive 4, the rise and the run respectively, what we're going to do is we're going to think of it as being the opposite. We're going to think of that as negative 3 and negative 4. Now these are both equivalent to one another, right? They're both equal positive 0.75. But this one will help us make the actual correct version of the graph. From the vertex, we're going to go down 3 units and left 4 units. And then we can do that again, down 3 and left 4. And that will end up making the other side of the graph that we want. And if you check it afterwards, you can see that we got the correct slope. Because from left to right, you would go up 3 units and right 4 units. Up 3 units, right 4 units. So that worked out correctly. All right, now you know how to graph an absolute value function. Um, and, well, that's it. You need to know where the vertex is, and you use the values of h and k in order to figure that out. And then you have to know what the slopes of the two sides are, and you use the value of a to figure that out. If you know all that information, very easy to make the graph of an absolute value function. All right, thanks for your attention, guys. Hope this works well for you. See you next time.